faster, that has a battery that lasts longer, that has a great graphics display, visuals, touch, sensors, and fits into the thinnest, lightest form factors ever. Let me show you some of the advancements we're making in Win 8. So, Windows 8 supports PCs of the widest possible range. ARM processors, 600 processor servers with four terabytes of RAM. Go ahead and fire this one up. Yeah, uh, Airport X-Ray gave me a hard time with this one. Yeah, this is an enthusiast system that's built with AMI firmware. It's kind of an extreme system. But the last time I did a boot demo was when we launched Windows 7. We had an Acer that booted in 15... Oh, oh it's, <laughs> see, it's almost faster than the monitor can turn on. That's UEFI fast boot. That was a full cold boot. That wasn't hibernate, that wasn't anything. It, it actually... Most of the time, we're just the fans spinning up on this uh, thing. It can start faster than the fan sometimes. It, and it's not just reserved, like UEFI performance isn't just for big, crazy, powerful systems. Another system that's a little bit extreme is my <laughs> DX11 graphics system. I love this thing. This is great. This is like ice over here. <laughs> I, I, well, it's not like ice. It's like lava, actually, up top. Because what I have is I have three NVIDIA GTX 580s, DX11 graphics card, three. They're linked together, they're running in SLI mode, hooked up to all the water cooling. But what this system is capable of doing on DX11 is turning about 700 watts of electricity into about 4.7 teraflops of computing power. <laughs> how, how many teraflops is that? <laughs> so it's like a woodchuck truck. truck yeah, I, uh, if you remember that giant Cray supercomputer, the, like the XPM or something? Yeah, with like the, with the big tower and, and the, the nitrogen cooling, yeah, and stuff? It would take 2,500 of those supercomputers to do the same amount of processing you can offload to those graphics cards. <laughs> it's, well, it's actually... And, and it's just Windows. It's just Windows running on. But this is, that sounds crazy, but it's actually useful. With the direct compute API, you can offload any kind of massively parallel calculation, scientific calculation, modeling, all to that. And Research labs process. are filled with machines like this. Sure, and dorm rooms, because they're also awesome for <laughs> the most unbelievably realistic and violent games you have ever seen. <laughs> this is a technology demo here. This is um, a technology demo from Epic. It's using the Unreal Game Engine, which is all DX11 powered, and this camera doesn't do it justice at all. If you get up really close to that screen, you can not only see incredible levels of detail, but the physics are all rendered in real time, and the whole rest of the world that's off camera is shown in a reflection in his eyes. It's like smoke. The thing is unbelievable. It really is. It really is amazing. You can see the wireframe for the tessellation. You can, you can really understand the power of the graphics. But what's really important with Windows 8 is because DX hardware is so prevalent in the entire ecosystem, we built all of Windows 8 on a hardware-accelerated graphics platform. So the reason that the UI is fast across this whole line is that everything has hardware-accelerated graphics, including the apps. So you write a Metro-style app, it's got graphics. Right, all the transitions, all the graphics, all hardware accelerated, yes. which we started in IE9. Yeah. And really baking that into the platform at the, at the native code. They, I think they like that. <laughs> Sounds good. Hardware accelerated graphics, no extra work, just write the app, and it runs from, from ARM all the way up to a system like this. Now, there's another place that um, we are... Uh, working with the um, ecosystems around displays. So one of the things you might notice across all of these displays is that they've got touch, 